Hello and welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today I'm actually making a video uh, to let you guys in on my play that I'm going to play tomorrow. And I thought it would be a good idea to just put this information out there. And again, this is not going to be a financial advice. So if you're looking for that, I apologize. I'm not going to give you any financial advice. This is just me thinking and I've done my analysis uh, over the past uh, few few days. And, you know, when I'm seeing the price movement and I think this is where it's heading to and and we're going to look at the options and see what the options contracts are saying for that, right? So let's talk about that. So I have a couple of resistance, support and resistance. Now, these support and resistance actually comes from the Bob Farrell's first law that every stock is going to come to it means, okay? Which means that it, at the end of the day, everything is going to come down to its its support that it had, right? Uh, original support. There's going to be spikes. The stock is going to go up. It's going to go down. But eventually, it's going to settle back down where it's supposed to be, okay? And there are a couple of supports that it needs to go through. And then, of course, there's a couple of resistance. If, it start, if the stock started trading up, you know, it has to start, go to certain prices and either it gets rejected or it's, it goes down, right? So the, the support that I've created here, uh, we're going to go through them in the details, but they are back from a couple of months, maybe a year or so, and they're not recent, okay? So at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people, when they do the technicals, they may be looking at a week or two weeks or something like that, but sometimes you got to go beyond that, right? When you have a, you have a bearish market, uh, you have to think broader. You have to think more, uh, maybe in a year term terms or 10 months term, uh, time frame. You can't be thinking about a daily time frame because that becomes more of a challenge where you, that's why a lot of people, I think, lose money, uh, eventually. Uh, so let's talk about that right? before, before I get into the, the technicals on the charts. Um, so very first thing I want to talk about is, uh, the RSI, right? The RSI, Right now for, and I'm on a daily chart, by the way, we're going to go to different um, time time zones, but let's look at a daily chart. Let's look at it at a broader picture, okay? Uh, on a daily chart, RSI is at about 38, okay? Anything below 40 or 50, it's like it's like the stock is in a bearish market. Anything below 30, you you know, everything is done. Like you, people are just getting rid of the stock left and right, okay? Anything below 30. Right now, the RSI for Apple, it's about 38 or so, which is heading toward, you know, the, the bottom. Bottom line, MACD is moving average conversion diversion, which is also negative 3.58. And Histogram, it's about negative uh, 1.53, which means there are more selling than buying happen on the stock. Okay, and the moving average conversion diversion is heading down. It's not going up because it's, it's, it's sort of going down from the means, okay? Um, and let's look at the, the stock on a weekly basis, okay? On a week, uh, look at the MACD on a week. MACD is way down. Uh, histogram, it's on a week, it's about negative point two point, you know, 2.92, which is a lot further down than it should be, uh, you know, on a weekly chart, okay? That, that's where it gives you a better picture what's going on with the stock, right? On a weekly chart, you see, uh, 38, okay? So on a weekly chart, way down. On a daily chart, it's somewhat down. Let's talk. Let's look at from one minute chart. Okay, one minute chart is very, very minuscule. If you have a long term play, on a one minute chart is just you know sort of consolidating right now. There's not much going on. It's we are in after hours, but it is close of Friday. Uh, you know, let's see what close of Friday MACD was. Okay, because we're on a minute chart. Yeah, on close of Friday, it went down uh to negative point two five. Histogram was way down to negative 0.09. Okay. Now let's look at the 30 minute chart. Usually that's what people tend to use. I usually, when I do um, options, I usually buy two weeks out or maybe, you know, if I'm buying on Monday, for example, I still, I still look at the four hour chart to just to give me an idea or the daily chart just to give me idea where it is. So let's look at 30 minutes chart right now. Okay. So 30 minute charts, MACD is now again, Again, it's a bearish market, even though you see a red, uh, green candle here. Uh, your moving average is still going down. Uh, mag, um, RSI, Relative Strength Index, is still slightly above 50, which means that some positive news is coming up, but it's not it's not sharp up. It's like a consolidated up, okay? So let's talk about the chart itself. I'm going to remove these indicators that I have here, and we're just going to talk about the support and resistance I have, okay? Now... Let's talk about the EMA first, exponential moving average. Exponential moving average is basically taking the last 13 candles, is, is weighing them heavily than it would on the um, the previous candles. Not a simple moving average. Exponential helps you a lot if you're doing options, for example. And on an exponential moving average, 
um, the the candles are way away uh, from the 13 period moving average, which means moving average is 153 from last 13 candles. If you combine those candles divided by 13, you'll get 1.53, for example. But right now, the price is hovering around 147. What it's saying is that if I was to take the average of 13 different 13 candles from from here to there you should the price should align to 153 however the volume that is being traded is pushing the price down and the price is actually at 147 right now so it's way down okay now when you have a, a candle like this generally what happens is you're saying you have buyers and seller coming in but nobody's winning clearly what's going on right usually this happens because of the news that hedge fund managers actually covered their calls on Friday, what what essentially they were saying is they they were shorting a lot of stock and uh, they saw a little bit of a up momentum and a lot of them started covering this short, sort of causing a little bit of a short squeeze. Uh, and then you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, this candle reflects that generally the stock will dip again. And I'll give you an example. There are many examples here. Even though you have a hammer, uh, hammer uh, right here, for example, you had a, a down downward trend. You have 130 million stock was sold. You had a hammer um, candle right here, 116 million, uh, and then, and then you know you see the downward trend, right? Um, this one right here came down. This dodgy is basically when this happens, you you just a reversal, but we in a bearish market, and this hammer is it's, to me this looks like a hammer again, 113 million shares, and I'm expecting the stock to go down, and I'm expecting the stock to go down to 140 levels. Uh, if you know if it's very if it's really bad uh, again this is on a daily chart so if it does go down on a day to 140 141 uh, next day we can see some bounce and then re re retracement and then come down again to 138 um, so the options that I'm looking at for example uh, let's say you look at a uh, strike price uh, for May 20th okay and let's look at the, uh, the interest uh, the interest on the levels that I put up okay now we have $140 that we think the price is going to go to. 29,000 people are willing to buy this this contract of $115, 29,000. There's another one, 135. Let's see if I have a 135 on my chart. Actually, I do have a 135, yes. I do have a 135 as well. I do have a 138 as well because I feel like there's a there's one uh, resistance I saw. There was one support that I saw um back in like six months ago that hit around 130 138 so i have that in added into my system so 135 is there let's look at 135 and see what these guys are saying 135 31,000 people are interested in 135 and now these um you can't just simply go off of these interests because you know a lot of people lose money on options as well so you can't simply go into options and say oh 29,000 people are going to buy this let me buy this and I'll be making you know money that's usually if I show you how many options expire worthless you'll be surprised so in that case right a lot of people are investing money but they're not doing any technical though that what I've noticed right so for example you have 44,000 people interested in this five cents con this is five cents contract so basically what, what it translates into five dollars they think the price is going to one going to go to 165 now even if they play this option for example right may 20th uh the options they're playing is 165 is going to go to 165 if it does go up to 153 154 they make ten dollars but on a 17th let's say tuesday if, if let's say tomorrow on Monday goes down, and then on Tuesday, even if it goes to 154, you make two dollars. If you go to 155, you make 55 dollars, and if you go to 158, 32 dollars. I mean, this is only five dollars. But again, what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make is first of all, you see all this red. The only profit you could really take is about this much, okay, on this one. So let's look at the 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 other one, right? So let's say we have. Here they think the the stock is going to go to 170. And the contract is about two dollars. Seventy nine thousand are interested in this. I mean, I understand, you know, from the gambling perspective, seventy nine thousand people think it's going to go two cents, and this is going to be one seventy. Right. Okay. If that happens, first of all, Monday, if the stock price does go to one four one fifty three, you make a dollar. If it goes to 154, you make three dollars. So if you go to 155, you make five dollars. I mean, this is to me, this is just 
just, I don't know. I mean, this is, again, the point I'm trying to make is not just to you know, criticize how people do trading, but, but just to show you guys that, you know, these high interest, you got to have some backing on this. You can't simply just go off of the high interest and just go, go for it because you will see, uh, you know, a lot of expensive options with high interest. And if you're not 100%, the, the the disclaimer for the options you will lose all your money and that's the fact okay if for example if i say okay the stock uh for example let's say if i'm gonna go to june 3rd okay things become expensive at that point and let's say if i go on june 7th the stock is gonna go to 150 dollars okay the stock option is gonna cost me 380 dollars okay and if it does not go to the levels that I want it to go. So I go, I say it's going to go to 150. Let's say it hovers around 147, 146. By June 30th, you're already down $269. And, and of course, you're going to expire worthless and you're losing all your $380. There's a lot more red than green, okay? It gets narrower and narrower. So in order to go for 150, you got to have a faith on your support and resistance program or your critical or your uh, technicals that the stock is going to go to that level, okay? So this is what I'm trying to tell you that, you know, this is where this becomes handy, right? So let's say if this crosses, if let's say hypothetically speaking, bullish market, the stock started going up. I know these are the levels that it has to cross. Now, when we say cross, that's very important because if I give you an example here, right? You see here, April 27th, the stock came down to 155. It got, it got rejected, which means that limit order kicked in, the stock picked up again. And I'm talking about days, okay? If you had an option, for example, you were done pretty much on that option for a few days. Like, this option would not have made you money, and you might have just sold the option. Panics, you know, a lot of people just get emotional, and they see a a, a price drop tr tremendously because because of lack of plan. They would just go ahead and, and just sell it, and essentially making it look like they bought it high, sold it low, but it should be other way around. And when it's other way around, you gotta buy at low and you gotta, you gotta have faith in your technicals. And what I'm trying to tell you is this is my opinion, only my opinion. Of course, nobody can predict the future. Uh, if it does not work out the way I'm saying it works out, I might be losing some money, but look, I'm okay. I'm willing to take that chance because it, it, it yields me some returns that I'm okay with my analysis. Okay. And I just want to make this video to help you guys give you all these different levels that I'm looking at, different options that I'm looking at. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the objective is if somebody can just get some out of it, they can make money off of it, you know, it would be very pleasing to hear that, you know, at least somebody else other than myself and my family and friends are be able to getting, uh, I'll be able to get benefit out of these things, right? So this, this is the time where, you know, retail investors really got to um, start investing and make money because, because, you know, when things started going down, you see a lot of fear in the market and you they will try to deviate you from not investing so but look this is my video for today just want to bring this quick video for you guys hopefully you know it's not too long and hopefully i added some value so if you did like the video please do give it a thumbs up and as i make different videos on different stocks the objective here is to get you guys all that information that i'm looking at and sort of let you in on my thought process and uh, hopefully we can help each other out so i'll talk to you guys in the next video